I haven't really enjoyed football for the last six, seven years. That is the state of my turnout. Guys, we have a problem. It's a pretty big problem. I'm gonna mix it up this week. Zach Foot here, I'm gonna introduce the vlog. We've got round two vlog, where be this week. Friday morning at Oxley, having a coffee, getting prepared. Jackson's gonna run through his day after this, but go Sharks. Now, the bad news was that I didn't realize and forgot that today was a public holiday. So my barber is not open and it's the second week. If you know, you know, we get a haircut every second week. So unfortunately, it's not gonna happen before game day. We're gonna have some toast now. I've got some coconut water and orange juice just to get some extra carbs slash electrolytes in. And we're gonna go for a little priming session. Home deck. Mentally feel like Kobe, I'm like Jokic with the rock You physically couldn't hold me, I don't care if you push a 40 You can never little bro me You're on step like Ginobili from young OG to the OG From nosebleeds to floor seats Circle stronger than Cuban links My gold dance should go plated You verse me, now that's a reach I went for a run during the week because the weather didn't permit for us to do much footy training on Tuesday night. So went for a run Wednesday. My feet and my calves are very, very sore. We're gonna have some lunch now, post-gym feed. Chicken, lots of veg, bit of salt, bit of spud. Do what you please. Goose! We're gonna get some recovery done now. We're gonna have about 45 minutes on the boots and we're gonna watch my old team back in Adelaide, West Adelaide Footy Club. I played my last season with in Adelaide. They're playing round one today. So we're gonna see how they're traveling this year and how they look. And we're just gonna chill out for a little bit. Today's a little bit weird. Got nothing to do, nothing's open. Average weather, average girlfriend. I guess you just have to be prepared to die. <laughs> Got a little bit of pasta here. I used to feel like I had to carb up as much as I can day and night before games. And I used to run out onto the football field feeling really heavy and things like that. Nowadays, I don't need to do that. Like, I didn't need to do that back in the day. So if you're a young kid, don't feel like you have to load up with a heap of food and a heap of carbohydrates. You go down to the oval and you feel Ugh. Just eat what you normally would. For me, I probably have maybe one extra meal, sort of either spread out across the day or I'll have it later at night, which sort of just tops you up a little bit. But apart from that, if you're eating the right foods. I don't think you need to fill your body up with all this food and you're not feeling too flash in the stomach. As we watch the Crows Frio game, this is one of those meals that I definitely don't need with the amount of exercise that I've done today. But I know it's going to help fuel me for tomorrow because it saves me from eating something else tomorrow morning so I can feel light, fresh and ready to go when I run out into the field. Let's go. Now I'm not too sure exactly what pair of boots that I'm gonna be wearing because my toes from last week are both blue. But that is the state of my toenail at the moment. And they're both very, very sore. I don't know if it was because I wore new socks, new boots, or all of the above. I'm gonna to have to give those boots at least another week or two weeks before I put them back on. As I drive myself to the game and we sip on our beetroot juice, I just wanted to sort of express the amount of gratitude I have for football at the moment. Probably since under 15s is when things got a little bit more serious. During junior football, you can enjoy yourself. You're playing for the love of it. Starts to get a little bit more serious. People are watching you. You have a bit more eyes. There's more media attention, all that sort of stuff. You start to lose a little bit of love for the game. It becomes more of like a business. I don't know the right word for it, but I just lost a lot of enjoyment just for football, the sport itself. Under 18s was probably one of the years that I enjoyed myself the most. I had dad coaching us. 
the team was great. We won the grand final, which obviously winning helps. I was performing relatively well, which also helps as well. But I just think the environment that I was in was absolutely fantastic. Probably halfway through last year was the point where I was like, I'm gonna take a lot of the stress and pressure away from football and just focus on enjoying it as much as I can. Because up until that point, I hadn't really enjoyed football for the last six, seven years. Actually, probably even longer, which sounds crazy to say because it's the sport you just grow up around, you enjoy, you love. But now I'm excited to go to every training session for every game. I get to like Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm like, come on, I want it to be Thursday, Friday already. So we're getting into that game day mode it's something that you never want to lose but you're going to go through ebbs and flows of it along your journey and that's one of the biggest reasons why i think persisting through it sticking through it not giving up not taking a step back just keep trying to work through it, it might take months it might take years but the reward on the other end of that is phenomenal so if you feel like you're struggling a little bit in your journey at the moment hang in there that's all i'm going to say because when you get down the track you finally take that pressure and stress away from yourself start to really really enjoy footy again and even pre-season last year like i rocked up to every training session i was like i can't wait to rip this pre-season apart I no, I just, I've got a lot of gratitude for the sport at the moment and can't wait to get out there and play each week and provide as much education, knowledge, valuable content for you guys as well. So hopefully you're enjoying it. Enjoy the game, subscribe to the channel. Let's go get that W. Before we get into the game, I want you to give me three things that you are grateful for to be in the running for this week's giveaway. Packets of protein pre-workout. Let me know three things you are grateful for. Doesn't have to be football related, but just three things. And then also the winner of last week's giveaway is Tyler Scott. Congratulations. Send me your details on Instagram and I will ship out your products to you ASAP. Let's get into the game. That'll come. Going pretty straight, the wind, isn't it? Slightly to that left post. Where do you like him? I want someone to kick with. How many Ks do you have this morning? Oh, you love the GPS. What are you doing, Yepsen? Plenty 80 meter bombs from down that end. Out of kick out. Oh yeah, love them. That's where Buzz loves them. Great day to be a winger though. Batting up early. Yep, he's at 12 already. First three minutes. That's 14, 15, 16. He's got the disco boots on. Bada bing, bada bong. What, what? I'm a hot believer. So much space on this wing. Stay for it. Two down, two up. Oof. Oh! No way. What have I just seen? <laughs> the third. Just take momentum. Let the wingers do the rest. Welcome back to round two. Now coming off a win, we were very confident coming into this match, but we also knew that Werribee are a really strong side. They made the grand final last year. So they're a quality outfit. They move the ball really well. They're a good running team. Even though they play in Melbourne on a bit of a smaller ground than what we've got here, they use, well, they play the ground well and they use their running power and ability. So they got the first goal of the match and we probably started a little bit slower than what we would have liked slash usually would uh, it was yeah a little bit sort of frustrating we just couldn't get our mojo going but it was a spicy little game this one there was a bit of heat and feeling involved because we probably rate ourselves as one and two in terms of being the best standalone club and that is something that uh, we want to pride ourselves on is being the best standalone club in the competition which means we're not aligned with any afl club that is uh yeah one of our goals and they beat us last year on our home deck as well. So we're really wanting to get that back and try and take this victory with both hands. But into the first quarter here, they kicked the first three goals, I think, of the match. They moved the ball well. They made the most of their opportunities, which we probably couldn't do. I think we had chances and we had opportunities, but we just didn't quite finish our work. And we, de we definitely started 5 to 10% off. Like... Our pressure was a little bit off. They like to play like a short sort of chipping game. It was a nice little spoil. Probably could have taken that mark nearly 
and uh, got the handball out yeah. to our teammates. So that's that support pattern as a winger that's really, really important. If I showed a bit earlier in the clip, uh, I would have started, I think it was around the half back line and then worked my way down and then come forward to defend. So that's always one of our focuses. But yeah, they like to chip the ball around, keep control of the footy. Nice goal by Buzz there. I think that was our only goal for the quarter. So you can see they've got a bit of a jump on us early and there's probably something that they pride themselves on as well now I went off here I think I spent the next 10 to 15 minutes off because one of our wingers was playing on one of theirs and we sort of wanted to try and keep that match up as much as we could and then I just got stuck on the bench which was yeah pretty frustrating for that 10 to 15 minute period so probably didn't play too much of the first quarter which was annoying but is what it is and then Tori also missed that kick there as well that was a nice kick on inside just to get the ball moving forward and this is immediately the next play after that unfortunately couldn't get the clean hands out to Zach Foote and would have probably we could have scored off that so we didn't really start the way we wanted to um, we were getting beaten on the inside and we knew there was a few things that we needed to tidy up, which is exactly what the coach is saying. Well, I don't care. Well, we get ourselves back into a position where we can jump string on the second half and go and win the game. Going into the second quarter, there was a bit of a breeze going down to the left of screen here as well. So we knew that wasn't going to do it all for us, but it was definitely going to help if we brought the pressure, we brought the heat and intensity, and then used the ball the way that we wanted to as well, which is what we started to do. They tried to rough us up a little bit, which you would have seen in the intro of this video. And I think that was a bit of their game plan. Not everyone did it, but they've got a couple of players that went to our mids in particular, been with Dorse and Boyd in there. They were they're our dominant mids, and they probably had a couple of key targets that they wanted to uh, yeah, get to and try and limit their impact. Had a handle there. The first half, I don't actually know. I think my first quarter wasn't too bad. Second quarter was just sort of okay. Started to get involved a little bit sort of later. And that's the hard part being out in the wing. Like you could not touch it. You could spend 10 to 15 minutes on the bench like I did. That's a, a nice goal. I don't think it was a goal actually from us there, but you could spend 10 to 15 minutes on the bench and then not touch it for five to 10 minutes. And that's nearly a whole quarter gone. And then all of a sudden you might get three, four handballs or a kick or something like that. So that was their other winger that I was playing on there. I don't know how the umpire saw that I was holding on because I felt like I had my back facing towards him and I kept his arm in pretty tight because I knew he was taller than me. He's probably got at least 10 centimeters. So um, I knew I had to do something else to try and help, but it didn't end up happening. So nice kick inside 50 here to try and get us moving forward. You can see the scoreboard. We started to work our way back into the game and we got on top. Unfortunately, didn't finish our work there, but... 41 to 33. This is on the siren just going into half time. Try a little talk, Maca Willis. Didn't quite make this decision, but I'm happy that we bounced first. back. But having that or leading even at uh, in at half time was pretty impressive, to be honest. We spoke about at quarter time just getting within a couple goals, and it wasn't all going to happen this quarter, but we could work our way back into the game. And then at half time, we spoke about trying to limit as limit them as much as possible because with this breeze it's probably a four to five goal breeze so if we could score one to two goals and keep it within one to two goals at three quarter time then we would go into the last quarter knowing and backing ourselves in to run over the top of them and win the game so there was quite a few stoppages in this third quarter it was sort of stop start stop start there's me just sort of pointing and trying to direct because uh, we had banger open probably just didn't use him early enough to get that kick to him but that's the sort of team play that you need to have like I was never going to get that ball and it was sort of leading into a spot where I could have received it but was more so wanting one of my teammates to get it so something to keep in mind when you're going out and playing this weekend for your team but yeah third quarter very sort of stop start put a little bit of pressure on here which was good they yeah, kicked it out in the full Another little bit to push and shove. We get a free kick, a downfield. Unfortunately, again, we just don't make the most of our opportunities moving forward. So third quarter, uh, I think, was a big tick for us. Like the second and third quarter, again, got out marked here. There's two one-on-one -on -one contests. I know he's got some size on me, but I need to bring the ball to ground. That's, that's the biggest thing. If I can't mark the ball myself, at least bring it to ground and have an impact that way. A little handball received out wide, holding my width, trying to hold balance uh, with contests and stoppages and things like that. 
trying to play my role as best I can. Tigers come back here a little bit, and I don't know if we get another goal in this quarter. I don't think we do. That one there as well. I just I tried to get the handball out. It was too late, and then the ball slipped out my hands. So not, not ideal. And this one here, I thought I thought I was on to. I had so much space and time. Could have run to the top of 50 and either had or shot, or something would have opened up in terms of um, getting the ball to my teammates. And this one, I knew I was outnumbered. Just tried to keep the ball in my area and wanted the boundary line, but without doing it deliberately. There was one in the first quarter, I think, that I don't know how he picked, the umpire picked it up, that it was deliberate. Like, obviously, I was trying to go out to the boundary, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Try to put some pressure on late in the third quarter here, and we went up, uh, we're up by four points at three-quarter time, so we are very happy with that. We thought that was enough with the breeze here to sort of get us over the line, and if we could continue to play the way we did in the second and third quarter, uh, we just wanted to stem their flow in the third quarter, and that's uh, all... And we ticked that box. That's perfect. So fourth quarter, we wanted to go. We still needed to score here. We know the Tigers are a good outfit and good running side. So they're going to keep coming. Wanted to get one inside there. I was looking inside, looking inside, and uh, just didn't quite find an option that was that I thought was worth it, especially in the back half. That one there as well. I probably wish I drove legs. Um, yeah, was it wasn't a great kick, great choice, I don't think. So there's always going to be a lot of improvements and areas and things like looking back at this footage a little bit of feistiness in this game and some heat it's one another one of our opportunities unfortunately couldn't make but yeah there's going to be a lot of different opportunities when you watch your game back to you wish you had that time again and it's what makes me excited to go again this week we just kicked the goal there go up by four points we're looking good Pressure's on. I thought that was holding the ball, to be honest. If you watch it back and slow it down, he tried to fend me off and didn't quite get to that ball either. So it's sort of like in the picture, I'm involved, but things weren't quite falling the way that I would have liked them to. This is the last play of the game, actually. We had an opportunity to go inside 50 and we didn't quite get the mark and then the siren went. So unfortunately, went down by three points. Very, very disappointing. And we weren't very happy with it, but that is football. Losing sucks, guys. What can you do? Work harder. Work harder. Not smarter. You need to work harder and smarter. Harder and smarter, thanks, coach. Anyway, we lost because we got outworked. They wanted it more than us, so we got smashed in contested possession in the last quarter. One of them shout out after the game. Post that on TikTok. Shout out to you, brother. That is the end. We've got to buy next week, so I'm going to show you what I get up to in terms of training over the weekend and how I'm going to utilize this weekend to set myself up for the rest of the year because not too long ago, I missed about a month, five, six, seven weeks, and now I've got to make that back. So this is the time I'm going to do it. Subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.